All right, folks. So in this video, we're going to take a look at this field strength meter that uh, that I built using some instructions from a February 2015 QST magazine. Um, I got some inspiration off from this on a other video I saw on YouTube, but it was so long ago, I don't remember which one it was. I do know that Randy K7AGE has one, and that's likely the source of where it, uh, my interest started. Uh, also, I have a video, and I'll link it below, where um, James from FEP Labs and I did some prototyping and messing around with these initially. And then this is my final revision of the, uh, of the project. And so what I'm going to do in this video is I'll show you the inside. We'll take a quick look at the magazine articles and the schematic required. And then we'll go ahead and we'll test this out and see how it performs. Um, so stay tuned and, uh, and hang on and all that kind of stuff. PCB Way now has a storefront where you can get the parts and the components that you need to complete your projects. At the PCB Way storefront, you can find the parts that you need. Click on the product menu, and then you can see various manufacturers that partner with PCB Way. If you're having trouble finding the component you need for your project, check out PCBWay.com. All right, so let's talk a little bit about what this meter is and what it does. And it's called a relative field strength meter. It will show you on a gauge the strength of your signal. But the reason it's called relative is that you use this to say my signal is stronger or weaker relative to this signal. Um, you can adjust this potentiometer and what this does is it attenuates the signal coming in in the event that you have a very strong signal that you're measuring. <clears throat> now some applications for this would be if I have a directional antenna, like say a two meter Yagi that I'm using, I can use this to see the gain that I get off the front side versus the back side or the, or the, or the sides of that antenna. Also, I could take a look at above the antenna, below the antenna, and get some ideas on my uh, far field plot um, and what that would look like. Also, I can use this with HF antennas to see which direction my antenna is radiating out in the yard, or potentially if I'm getting an impact from things in my near field, like uh, propane tanks or swing sets or something along those lines. The other thing is, it's just kind of fun to mess around with. So what we have here is one of my favorite radios, the BTEC DMR6X2. It's a digital and analog HT. I have it set up for analog right now. And uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this to test this. We're also gonna take a look at the effects of uh, horizontal versus vertical polariz um, polarization of our antennas. So let me just go ahead and uh, key this up. But first I'm gonna ID and we'll come right back. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna just go ahead and key up and see what we see. There you can see that uh, the attenuation can be adjusted by this knob. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look and see what the effects are when we key vertically. So, and you can see that there was some movement or some adjustment there, which is pretty neat. The other thing that you can do is, is that if you have an antenna that, uh, that you want to test out or compare to a different antenna, you can put them both on your radio and then key up from the same uh, proximity to this device and you'll be able to see that. All right, what I want to do now is I want to show you the guts and take a look at the innards of this thing. So let's take a few minutes to talk about the enclosure and the build and all that stuff. So when you take a look at this, this is just a project box that I got from AliExpress. They were like $11. Um, and here is the front panel where we put this. Now it comes with two panels and I have them attached to the back. And the reason I have both of these attached to the back is that in the event that I change this up or need it or want to use it for something different, I can just unscrew these and then flip it around. One thing I'll say is, is that this did not come with screws, which I thought was a little bit uh, silly, but it didn't. So I had to go to the store and, uh, and buy my own. And uh, so we have the, both the panels on the back and then my buddy Thump, and he is really a great guy, uh, worked with me and helped put this, uh, he designed this 3D panel, 3D printed panel on the front. And so I just had to give him the specifications and the layout of everything that I wanted. And it fits perfectly and we just go ahead and we screw this down and we're good to go. Uh, taking a look at the panel here is our antenna, SMA antenna port. And uh, it was a straight through and I added a, a right angle here so I could just have it point up. Um, here's the knob for the potentiometer to adjust the sensitivity. And then here is our 100 uh, microamp meter that we have on here. Now, if you don't have a 100 microamp meter, you could use a different meter. 
Um, I, tr- I played around with a couple of different ones to try to find the one that had their matched well with my sensitivity and would actually register when uh, I was trying to detect RF. And this worked the best for me. And then taking the look at the back, you can see it's a relatively easy wire job. Just your positive and negative leads go to the, um, go to the meter here. And then on the back, and we'll zoom up, you just see I have a components here. The potentiometer is actually what holds this board to the uh, 3D printed panel. It's all connected there. And then we have, um, when I built this, this was my, this is my test uh, antenna port. And then here's the one that we use now. Let's take a look at some pictures of some stuff, including an earlier version of this. And uh, we, can, we can talk about it then. So I know this is a little bit difficult to read, but what it is, is the QST article that we used from February 2015, page 71. And if you do a Google search for field strength meter QST February 2015, you'll be able to pull this up. And uh, he does a couple of different things in here. uh, But the the thing that we're most interested in is in the top right hand corner. And that's where he uses this digital multimeter to create the field strength meter. And there's a little bit of a schematic there that we're gonna go over. Uh, Let me go over one slide. And this is the prototype, or I guess the first rendition, revision of this thing that we made. And uh, I was just feeding it into the digital multimeter through the COM port and the the hot port. And it worked well. Um, the, The reason being is I always knew I wanted to put this into a project box and I didn't want to leave it in, um, uh, the multimeter all the time. I just wanted it on a project box on my bench. Why? I don't know. That's just what I envisioned. And, uh, let's take over one more. Here we go. This is the actual layout or the innards of the device. And you can see the, uh, there's two capacitors and then you have, uh, two diodes, uh, splitting the signal. And we have another two capacitors and then a potentiometer. And uh, it was really a simple thing to, uh, to put together. Um, let me go ahead and take a quick look at the schematic so you guys can see the layout there. So here is the schematic, and it is a relatively simple uh, schematic. I would encourage anybody to try this. You can see the layout that uh, is used in the article just below that, if that helps give you any ideas. But we have our antenna come in through a 0.05 uh, microfarad capacitor and then uh, into two diodes. And these on the schematic are marked one and three, four. Uh, I was unable to source those, so I had to get uh, one and three, four A, but uh, they work just fine. 470 picofarad capacitor and a 50 kilo ohm potentiometer. <clears throat> Another 0.01 uh, microfarad uh, capacitor. And here on the, uh, on the diagram, there is an S1, and that is for a switch. Uh, you can see that depicted on the left-hand side of the multimeter below. Uh, we didn't use a switch in ours because we are not using a digital display that requires battery power like the multimeter. So uh, we were good there. And then you have your positive to meter DC and negative to meter ground. And uh, as we saw, we just have that going right into the back of our analog meter, which seems to work just fine. Uh, it was an easy build. The uh, hardest part, the longest part was waiting for the diodes to get here from China. All right, folks, and uh, that's going to wrap it up. This was a nice, fun little project. We get to do some 3D printing. We get to do some soldering, some component selection. Uh, We get to read some schematics, put it together, do some testing, and play around with some RF. Uh, It was a lot of fun, and I'm glad I did it. Uh, If you want to try it, go ahead and good luck. Thanks for watching, everybody. Totally appreciate it.